The Prime Minister is too weak to stand up to his Home Secretary, who wants to criminalise giving homeless people tents because she thinks it's a lifestyle choice. Despicable. We all know what she's up to. It's naked. Instead of sacking her, the Prime Minister cowers next to her. He's cowering next to her today too. She's out of control. She's utterly irresponsible, undermining the police while stoking up division ahead of a difficult and important weekend. She's unhinged. I'm thinking of the amount of times I've spoken in criticising and calling out the police for their behaviour on things that they've got wrong. But what we are seeing the Home Secretary do is blatantly interfere with the operational day-to-day -day yeah, decisions exactly. of the police. We have to call that out. The police have to be independent. And, and I've lost counts, Mr Speaker, the, the amount of people that our current Home Secretary has demonised, whether it's LGBT people, yeah, yeah. homeless people, yeah. minorities. Why? Why is there so much hate spewing from this Home Secretary? Yeah. The organisers of the march have said that they are not coinciding with Remembrance Day. Can the Minister please correct that and stop conflating the two issues together? Yeah. Minister. Well, look, I, again, I don't accept the characterisation that the Honourable Lady makes. I think it is, it is both um, unfair uh, and unintentionally um, inaccurate. Um, there are all kinds of risks the police are going to have to manage uh, on Saturday if this march goes ahead including the risk that groups break away, which in fact did happen last weekend, last Saturday. Uh, a group broke away and ended up in Trafalgar Square. They set off fireworks. Eleven police officers, eleven police officers were assaulted um, as a result of that. Um, so those are the kind of risks um, that are going to have to be managed on Saturday by the police. That is not an easy job, but I'm sure the police have this House's full support in doing so. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. The fact that only two Conservative MPs have turned up today to defend the Home Secretary, I think, shows mm. that she has already lost the support of the House. Um, but the Minister is absolutely right when he says that there is no place for hate on our streets. Isn't the truth of the matter, though? There's no place for hate in the Home Office either. And the problem with the present Home Secretary is that she's the person who is inciting hatred yeah. in this country. He's absolutely right. It's perfectly fair for us to have scrutiny of the police, but that normally comes after an operational event, mm. not before it. Isn't the truth of the matter that this Home Secretary is really trying to command the police, yeah. and that completely breaches every single understanding that we've historically had of the operational independence of the police? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, I'm slightly concerned that the Honourable right Member said there are only two Conservative members in the House. It's quite clear there are a great deal more than that, and given his... Given I don't want to get to a dispute about counts. All I would say is, I think, on both sides, I'll just help with a little clarification. There are more Conservatives, but only two have spoken. I think that was the point. Yes. Yes, indeed, that wasn't quite how it came across on the Honourable Gentleman's comment, but I will move on. I will move on. Oh, 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 oh. We all have a judgment, and I've made mine. Minister. Words matter. Yeah. So can the Minister explain, in the absence of the Home Secretary, in what way does the Home Secretary think that protest marches in the UK relating to Israel and Gaza are disturbingly reminiscent of Ulster, and does he agree? Well, that, that is not directly germane to the protests on, uh, on Saturday. We have, we have seen, but we've seen, we've seen, we've seen all kinds of, we've seen all kinds of, of protests of different kinds in Ulster, in Ulster over the years dissident Republic, uh, Republicans, uh, amongst others. Um, but what we need to do is make sure London's streets are safe, that we don't have an atmosphere of fear or intimidation, and that is what we expect the police to deliver. This morning, a former Chief Constable of Durham warned that the storm being whipped up by the Home Secretary is diverting resources away from a very serious threat which might arise. Does he not understand? that the Home Secretary's incendiary and inflammatory comments ahead of what is going to be a really complex and sensitive policing operation for the Met this weekend is making their jobs even harder. Isn't this a deeply irresponsible way for a Home Secretary to behave? Yeah. Well, well, I don't accept her characterisation. Um, I think the Home Secretary and other um, politicians on both sides are perfectly entitled um, to hold policing to account. Um, but of course this government, as the Prime Minister said, accepts the principle, indeed embraces the principle of operational independence. We all know, I guess, many people will be on the march on Saturday. The organisers and participants have told me that they will be participating in 
ceremonies of remembrance and that the march has been organised in such a way that it doesn't impact on that. But the truth is that the government is attempting to draw the police into taking political sides in a very contentious matter in the country. There are millions of people who want a ceasefire. Yeah. Now, that is a dangerous, slippery slope which we're on. Operational dependence of the police to protect the right of assembly, the basic English right of liberty, is being challenged by the Home Secretary. She is not fit to hold that post, is she? No. Well, well I, I don't uh, accept that characterisation. Uh, of course, we respect uh, all of us, I'm sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness me, I've got a bit of a cold, Mr. Speaker, this morning. Um, thank you for your good wishes. Um, all of us, all of us uh, accept the right to protest, of course, which, as the honourable gentleman says, long predates uh, the European Convention on Human Rights. There are obviously limits to that concerning public order, concerning incitement to racial hatred, and so on and so forth. It is for the police uh, to police those laws, but it is reasonable um, for politicians to hold them to account for doing that, as many politicians on both sides quite rightly do. The Shadow Home Secretary's question was whether the Minister could confirm that the Home Secretary's intervention to undermine the operational independence of the police was signed off through the normal number 10 process and therefore has the support of the Prime Minister. The Minister said he has no sight of that. So what is he going to do to furnish the House with an answer to that question? Minister. Well, I'm afraid communications between other members of the government are not a matter for me. I'm responsible for policing, delivering record police numbers and falling crime. That's my job and I'm doing it. On this Home Secretary's watch, every day 6,000 crimes across England and Wales go unsolved. So does the Home Secretary trust the police to do their job or not? If the purpose of our article was to say that she knows better than the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, then she should say so, and she should say so here in this chamber. And if not, then what possible motive could she have for seeking to undermine public confidence in the police in this way? Yes, we do have confidence in the police, but it is perfectly reasonable to scrutinise and hold the police to account for their actions, as police and crime commissioners do every day, as members of this House do every day as well. Um, and in terms of confidence in policing more widely that he mentioned, uh, I would point out that according to the Crime Survey of England and Wales, on a like-for-like -like basis, crime is now 54% lower than it was under the last Labour government. <laughs>